Hello, I'm Norma, and today is Friday, March the 22nd. I've picked rather an unusual passage to share good news from. I'm reading the opening of Psalm 22. This is a Psalm of David titled, A Plea for Deliverance from Suffering and Hostility. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Well, these words are probably more recognizable as the last agonizing words Jesus spoke from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But why would Jesus choose this moment to quote scripture? Now, many scholars see this psalm as prophetic, pointing to the coming Messiah. Is Jesus merely telling his followers, I am the one who is foretold? In innocence, we were created to live in close communion with our creator and in harmony with all creation. That all changed with one act of disobedience. Then Adam and Eve saw that they were naked and immediately tried to cover their guilt and shame. And don't we still do the same thing? Try to hide all our ugliness, masquerading behind the facade of who we wish we were. And sadly, we often point out the flaws in others to make ourselves look better. But even if we think we are deceiving others, we can never hide from our true nature. God in love sent Jesus to accomplish what we could not do. In that moment, as Jesus hung in the veil between life and death, he took on all of humanity's hatred, greed, and suffering. The weight of this burden left him feeling abandoned and alone. With his last words, it is finished. He completed what he had been sent to do. It's as if Jesus took our soiled garment, put it on, and then carried it to the grave and threw it away. In its place, he closeth in his spotless, brilliant robe of righteousness. It does not mask our sin, but covers us with God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 to 10 reads, But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. Now, Paul describes us as clay jars, just ordinary vessels made to serve a purpose to hold the treasure of God's goodness. Now a clay jar is fragile, easily cracked or broken, but we need not be crushed or destroyed. We are not alone because we no longer carry the weight of our sin. Jesus' death has given us freedom and new life. And this is the hope of the cross. Now as we enter into Holy Week, we walk through the darkness assured of the hope of the resurrection and the promise of new life. Each Sunday, Mark offers this blessing. May you see the face of God in everyone you meet, and may they see the face of God in you. May you look beyond the brokenness of humanity and see the treasure that lies within each of us, and may God's light shine through you. May you find encouragement in this promise Jesus rose victorious over sin and death, so we may share in the fullness of new life. Well, I wish you and all you love, and even those you struggle with, a very blessed Easter. God bless until next time.